Senator Heidkamp. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. I think we all agree that um, permanent solutions can be found in economic opportunity um, uh, in Indian country and native Alaskan uh, country. But economic opportunities really are not possible without infrastructure. There's no two ways about it. And one of the most difficult pieces of inter infrastructure is housing. Um, I have uh, uh, been uh, shocked that we've been unable to complete Nahasda. Um, it is uh, a cornerstone piece. But I also know that Nahasda in and of itself is not adequate to meet the housing needs. When you, you know, recently in a trip to Turtle Mountain, uh, Secretary Castro um, uh, was, was in the first HUD housing project in uh, Indian country. Um, and he was devastated to see the disrepair and the conditions it was in. And in fact, um, nothing to write home about. They had just come from Pine Ridge and believed that um, the housing conditions in Turtle Mountain were um, actually worse than Pine Ridge, if you can imagine. And I know that um, you have since designated uh, Turtle Mountain uh, Promise Zone. We look forward to implementation of that. Um, but if we keep doing what we've always done and even do it slower and less efficiently, we're going to fall further and further behind in terms of affordable housing. And so I want to um, just uh, tell you that uh, Secretary Castro, I hope, will be in North Dakota having a HUD regional housing um, uh, summit. Uh, we know we've been talking to our partners in rural development. We're hoping that we will get some good ideas that can do public-private partnerships because there isn't enough money here to, to do the things that we need to do. With that said, I think, Ms. Salerno, um, Senator Tester and I were both, quite honestly, kind of shocked by the numbers. I think the chairman said $212 billion in loan guarantees with only $3.1 billion actually in Indian country. Now, I recognize that, that some of those loans would, in fact, cover Indian country if they were given to the rural co-op that's responsible for Indian country or to, to a, a, a electric co-op. But, but I do have to tell you that that's inadequate, given that in our states, it is the highest poverty area in terms of rural poverty. We can't, you know, and if it's, well, they didn't apply, then we should know that there is a problem with outreach. We should know that somehow the repayment terms could be readjusted or the fear of taking on debt is, is one of the, the issues that we are challenged with all the time in terms of Indian country. And so wanna wanna ask um, beyond what, what uh, uh, Senator Murkowski was talking about, um, how, and, and this is uh, to you, Mr. Hagan, probably, why, why is it that we only have such a small percentage of the commitment for rural development that has been deployed to Indian country to directly? Why do you think? Personally, I think what, what we've been talking about for the last couple of minutes is the biggest reason. We don't have that, that outreach, that one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the, the grants that we had received two years ago, a housing preservation grant, when we went to implement it with the local uh, USDA representatives out of, out of Billings, they were unsure how to implement it. Even though they had um, talked about uh, having this grant for years, they were unsure how to implement it. So it set us back a couple of months. So I think uh, the fact that USDA has lost some of their key staff um, is probably one of the reasons there hasn't been much outreach. Ms. Salerno, can you offer some suggestions on um, how we can do a better job addressing needs in Indian country with USDA funding? Uh, thank you. Um, a couple of things, um, Senator Heikamp. One is, just want to make sure we're talking apples to apples. So the, the, the our loan portfolio is $212 billion that, you know, we've had over our history. So we're like a development bank. That's what we are. Rural development is pretty much a development bank. We have some grants and we're a development bank in this country. And so we don't, it's not a 3.12 billion over a 2.2 billion, uh, 212 billion. It's a three, it's a, it's a what we get from our appropriated dollars from our appropriators. And so when we get we did $500 million in Indian country last year. That's out of approximately $29.5 So 
it's bad. I mean, it, it may still be not enough. It probably isn't enough, but it's over a, that year period. So the percentages are, what's that, 5%, I guess. Uh, so it's, fi it's 500 million over a $29.5 billion what we put out. And just not to say we're doing great, but we're certainly three and a half, three point two billion dollars, three point one billion dollars that we've done over the Obama administration is about double what we did over the previous eight years. So we're we're making traction. But what you're worried about is are we doing enough outreach? And are why are we not getting well, I, a I, I'm worried. percentage? I'm worried that if we're going to create economic opportunity in Indian country, we need infrastructure. That's what I'm worried about. And if we don't have infrastructure and we don't have commitment to build infrastructure, we'll continue to in experience incredible rates of tribal poverty. And so um, I, I, I think, I think you, you know, I know the commitment that's been made by this administration, but I uh, know our frustration and I'm out of time, but I, I just want to continue. Hopefully we'll be able to get some good ideas from the housing summit. I think that curb and gutter, those kinds of things, the embedded costs, you know, if, if we didn't have to worry about, you know, the road and the sewer and the water and all of the additional costs, and we could just focus on actually building the home, we'd be so much further ahead. And so in home ownership. And so, I, you know, these are, these are difficult problems. And, and we know what a great partner on many cases USDA has been. We're hoping that we can enlist even further partnership. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Heitkamp.